All right, so I have a, uh, a Bridgeport clone vertical mill. This is by a company called Millport. It's a variable speed. It's a nice mill. It is, uh, I've been very happy with it. Um, it has a three horsepower, three phase motor. So when I bought this mill, I had to figure out how I was going to get three phase uh, power to it. And of course, there's a few options that you can do. Um, of course, there's a rotary phase converter, which probably is the best thing. And if you have multiple uh, three phase uh, equipment, I do have a lathe over here, which is 220, but this is single phase. So that's not a problem. That was never an issue. I was able to wire this right into the existing uh, power that's here in my shop. Uh, but the mill was a different story. Since it does have a three phase motor on it, I needed three phase power. So like I was saying, if you've got multiple uh, pieces of equipment that, that uses three phase power, a rotary phase converter probably would be a good option. Probably the best option because you can run multiple uh, pieces of equipment from a single uh, rotary phase converter. Meaning if you have a rotary phase converter, you can if you have three or four uh, machines, you can wire every one of them to that rotary phase converter and that one rotary phase converter will power all of them. That's, but what I ended up going with, and for me it was a space saving uh, deal, was a VFD. And this VA, uh, this VFD, hold on a second, let me get the uh, name of it because I honestly don't know how to pronounce it. I'm going to open the name up so you can see it. I don't know if you can see that. And that's also the part number of this particular one. This particular one is a three horsepower model. It'll power a three horsepower motor. Now, what it does is it takes 220 and it converts it to three. It takes 220 single phase, converts it to 220 three phase. And very easy to wire up. Of course, I got a, I got a main on off switch right here which you don't have to put that in but I did and so the main ignore these wires right here these are not necessarily needed um, the only thing you need are those back there so I got my 220 coming in going to the appropriate terminals then I got my 220 coming out going over to the mill what these wires are are for the uh, variable speed and I didn't have that hooked up initially. I just used the variable speed on the mill, which I still use most of the time. But my back gear on this mill is a little, uh, little. I've got a. I really need to take this uh, head apart and go through it and see what the deal is with the back gear. When the back gear started going out, I didn't want to run it in back gear if I didn't need to, so I just keep it out of back gear. The problem is that it only goes down so far as far as a low speed when it's not in back gear. So I needed, there was a few of my tooling, you know, whenever you're using a, a large face mill like that um, and, and other things, you know, a fly cutter that, that might be five or six inches in diameter, you need to run those slow. Well, this was $130, so I decided to go ahead and uh, get one of these, um, hook it up, and I've been perfectly happy with it. I have used this now for about five years. Um, and let me show you basically how it works. So you, you throw the switch on, then here in just a few minutes you'll see the display come on. You can also get these where the knob is right here. You can see the little uh, marking there where you could have a rotary knob right there. Or you can wire it into those terminals and you can put your knob, like I did, wherever you want. Okay, so now the, the uh, VFD's fired up. Now, I've got my mill that works. I can turn the speed all the way down or... however slow I need it to go. Now obviously the problem with this slow with a VFD once you start putting a load on it you have to manually adjust the 
the knob up here because the load will slow down the uh, you know the machine you don't have that problem when you've got it in back gear it, you know whenever it's turning 60 rpm you're not going to stop it it's going to turn 60 rpm with a vfd if you're turning 60 rpm and you start putting you know a heavy cut on it it's going to try to slow the machine down so you you know you have to tweak the knob a little bit and speed it up you know to give it however much power that it's going to need but under normal conditions you know you turn it up i mean it, it, it runs perfectly fine and i've got i've got it wired into where it's got both reverse and uh forward but i've been extremely happy with this vfd uh it is fully programmable um, and I can't even remember now how to uh, to do all the programming. In fact, if you, you see the frequency that it's set at right there. I'm turning the knob so it goes to 50 down to zero. So as you turn the knob, that's what you're changing is the frequency and that's what varies the uh, the motor itself. So, you know, just so you know uh, what that is. And you can, you can change this display. Uh, I can't even remember how to do it now. But you can actually change the display to different, uh, show the different modes. There you go. But that's pretty much it um, in a nutshell. So very small. I mean, you can see how small they are. There's, you know, there's my hand. I've just got it mounted on the wall. Power runs up in into the bottom, then runs out of the bottom. So, uh, yeah, for a nice compact small unit there you go and then of course to turn it off you just throw that switch and then here in just a couple seconds it shuts off so that was my solution to getting 223 phase to my mill and like I say I've I've heard people kind of knock these. I've had perfect, perfectly good experience with mine. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know, I, I don't know what their problem is. I haven't had a problem one with this. Would a, uh, a rotary phase converter be better? Probably, but I don't want to have to have a rotary phase converter sitting down somewhere and uh, you know spinning up for just one meal that I use every now and then, you know, in, in a hobby shop. Um, you know, this isn't a, if, if this was any kind of a production environment where I use this all the time, I'd probably definitely have a rotary phase converter. They are by far the, uh, the best and rel most reliable way to provide three phase electricity to, uh, equipment that you need three phase for. But, for five years worth of using this, I mean, you can see how dusty it is up on top here. Look at that. I ought to probably blow it out, but I mean, like I said, I haven't had any problems. It's been it's been purring purring right along. Um, so until I have an issue with it, I'm going to keep using it. Maybe if this thing ever quits, then I'll buy a rotary phase converter. But for about $130, $150, that's about what I paid for this five years ago. They're probably more expensive now. Uh, I'm perfectly happy with this. If you do get one, make sure you get one that is rated for your horsepower rating. This is a three horsepower motor. Uh, I can't remember the specs on this. It's at least four at three horsepower. It may be for up to a five. I can't remember. But uh, they make them for one, two. They make them 
for all different sizes. Just make sure you don't get like a, a one or a two horsepower if you have a three horsepower motor running off of it. Um, I'm assuming that it would probably not last very long if you tried that. But anyway, my story on my VFD, I haven't had any problems with it. You guys take care.